Some of these girls, is their lucky day, they're gonna get a necklace. So, 12 months old, they get a necklace, and then we can get a baseline for a month. Pretty much all this is, it's, uh, I don't know, I'd call it a Fitbit for cows. It keeps track of their motion, and then the rumination, so when they chew their cut, so. Good health indicator, and uh, the activity helps us with breeding. So when they're in heat, they move a lot more than usual, and we can, uh, pick up on their heats that way. It's a long distance tag. The antenna in the big barn uh, pick, downloads the data off of this tag every two hours. and uh, That's how we keep track of them. Anything else? No. Make sure you uh, stick around to the end of the video because Mason has agreed to kiss one of these girls so we can, uh, so we can go viral. <laughs> Okay. I thought we talked about this. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Alright, I guess I'll talk to Kyle. <laughs> Alright, which one? 91 to 700. Uh, they're all lined up. Oh yeah, they're ready for it. While we uh, put collars on, we'll go ahead and give them some vaccines too. What do you want to be in charge of? Back oh, you can't. Well, the one's the same as last time, pretty much. Bova Shield and then uh, Ultra Back 7. 696, what's your number? What's the lucky number? 3, 4, 5, 8, 4, 9, 1. All right, so every one of these transponders has a seven digit number that we have to match up with her ear tag. 699, tell me. Uh, it's 515-7039. Is there a certain side the transponder's gotta be on? Yeah, it's got to be on the left side. Well, why is that? The rumination part won't work. Yeah? I'm not sure about the anatomy behind it, but... Well, rumen's on the le left side. All right. I think it, it uses like a microphone, and it listens, but... I don't, does it listen to the actual rumen, or does it listen to their... I thought it was a cute part. No, the... Well, I know on the ear tags, it's like based on the movement. The way it moves. But, uh, I don't know. That's why we're dairy farmers and yeah. not lately engineers. Or... That's right. Uh, all we want to make sure is it's tight enough that it don't fall off and loose enough so it don't bother them. So. Pretty simple. Number. My bad. <laughs> Five seven six. Okay. Six two. Six two. Okay. Nine six. Okay. You know, you're always saying good help's hard to find, but look at all this help you got. Ah, that's in. true. So helpful. <laughs> Takes a little bit of getting used to the collars. Okay, so then all we gotta do is tell the computer uh, which cow gets which tag. Why don't we pull up an activity graph? And so this is what the collar will tell us then. Um, this dark blue line is the activity, and this teal line, is that what you call that? Turquoise. Turquoise. Like that. It's turquoise. <laughs> 
color is the rumination. So when the cows in heat, their activity will spike and she'll forget to eat for a day and that's why the rumination will drop and that's a real good indicator of the heat. And then this pinkish color uh, is the heat probability. And this first part here is like seven days. It doesn't register that because it needs to build a baseline. And we need a baseline because every cow is different. You got lazy cows and you got active cows. And so it needs to know what kind of cow the collar is on first. So here you can see this was a heat and then they cycle every 21 days. So here was another one. And this one we actually bred her off. So. He ended up buying a uh, forage harvester, Klaus 940. If we've needed one of these forage harvesters, always had the work custom done. Uh, hay we always round build and wrapped. Our corn silage we'd always have chopped by a custom harvester. That has always worked out really well for us. Um, they've always shown up when we needed them to and uh, it's always worked out. Uh, problem being the area we farm in is uh, heavy crop farming, or row, row crop farming I should say, and not much, not a heavy livestock. There's a couple big outfits in the area, um, and then a couple smaller outfits in the area. Uh, we're kind of like in the middle. For the smaller custom harvesters in the area, uh, we're pretty big, and for the big custom harvesters that come into the area, we're pretty small. We purchased our own machine. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, thing got a little bit out of hand. So our custom harvester called us in January and told us they weren't good. they weren't going to be custom harvesting any longer. When we first started looking at harvesting our own crops, we were looking at a pole behind. Looked at that for a while. Uh, they don't give those machines away. Um, what we got here, oh, about double the capacity and it's self-propelled meaning we don't need an extra tractor because for the pole behind we would have needed another tractor probably one and a half times bigger than what we currently have our biggest tractor right now is like 210 pto horse and we probably would have needed a 300 pto horse tractor to run a decent sized uh pull behind yeah like i said it got a little bit out of hand <laughs> uh this is a 940 model so that's like a 450 horse engine I, it's a v8 uh, mercedes engine that pretty much powers the thing. You guys seen me run to the parts store and we got a bunch of parts. So we'll kind of run through what we replaced and what we need to replace yet. But we replaced this scraper and smooth roll because the roll that was in there wasn't all that smooth anymore. I've seen a rock or two. And we replaced the smooth roll and the scraper. We got to replace some of these or some of these grabbers on here. We replaced the wear plate behind the accelerator. I was getting a little thin. And then one other part we gotta replace yet is there's a little inspection hole there on the top flange that uh, isn't supposed to be there. So we'll have to pull this spout off and put a new flange on top. I got these two bolts out where it pivots, got the cylinder off. We're gonna just leave it on the support bracket over there. And I'm just gonna run a strap through here and throw it over the rafter. I don't think this thing is too heavy, especially if we support it on the other end, but we're gonna find out. We're just using the ratchet strap to move it up so we shouldn't be able to put too much force on there, so. Well, it already came with one crack in the window. And I don't want another one, so we'll set that behind there.
That's why that's gotta come off. Yeah, that got worn pretty thin. Well, we got her out. Uh, actually, it wasn't too bad. I think uh, I did leave the bolts in there, which made it a little bit more of a pain in the butt. But um, reason I did, I don't think they were all quite the same length. And then this way, I'm sure that I get the right bolts back in the right hole. Most all them bolts back in. Get the grease zerks in, so it's time for chores now, so we'll get the spout back set on there tomorrow. this thing ready to go here in a couple weeks.